Perry from Pennsylvania. I thank the chairman. Mr. Shapley, if you can turn to page 30 of your transcript, then I want to say to Mr. Shapley and, and, and Mr. Ziegler, we sure appreciate you coming forward. I think, look, we, we've heard of alleged so-called whistleblowers in the past. They, they couldn't reveal themselves, uh, and it led to an improper impeachment of a president that was unjustified and unsubstantiated. So I really do credit you. I think this has probably very, been very, very difficult and a hard choice for you to make, but, um, but I think it was the right one, and I commend you for it. Mr. Shapley, page uh, 30 of your transcript, uh, let me see, a middle of the page, last sentence, second paragraph, starting with every single day. Every single day was a battle to do our jobs. Now, I understand that in Congress, but you're following the letter of the law, you're taking in information, you're doing prescribed, you do this, you do this, and you get that. Why is your day, why, that's a chilling line. What did you mean when you said that? So yeah, every time we tried to communicate investigative steps and get support for investigative steps, it was always, it was always slow walked, it was always pushed off that we needed a, a PIN's a DOJ public integrity's approval or DOJ OEO's approval. And uh, it was just used as a crush. The process was really used to, uh, to stall the investigation. And, um, you know, ultimately, as, uh, you know, and these, which, which some people seem to be overlooking, is that these prosecutors agreed with these charges. And, and you finally reached your red line. You said previous in, in asking, answer Mr. Fallon's question, you were seeking justice. I believe you were. I, I don't think you were picking winners and losers, just seeking to see who's following the rules. You finally reached your red line October 7th of 2022 at the meeting with U.S. Attorney Weiss. Is that a reasonable characterization? Yeah, that's correct. And what did you mean when you say you reached your red line? So, so throughout the, the investigation starting uh, in the summer of 2020, um, my uh, uh, case agents were coming to me with certain concerns and uh, uh, because we were worried about the, the discovery process uh, with agents turning over documents at the end of the investigation, we wanted to protect that investigation. So. I, I documented uh, 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 them on a recurring basis, uh, issues that we were having, um, and uh, it was after discussions with my agents. I also saw these things firsthand. So, uh, so we got to the point, it's a heavy burden. Like I have a very deep respect for the Department of Justice and uh, AUSAs and US attorneys I've worked with in the past. And uh, I, I just couldn't, it, to, to ultimately conclude that they were doing the wrong thing, was just such a high burden. Yeah, you concluded that. And, and Mr. Ziegler, your red line, I think you said, I don't want to mischaracterize, mischaracterize, a little later, December 14th, 2020, when AUSA Wolf tips off the Biden Council about your plan to search the, uh, the storage unit. Is that, is that right? Or? You, absolutely, because that storage unit, the, the method that we were planning to do was the least intrusive. It was a storage unit. We wanted to get, we, we, need, or we needed to get those records. And again, you were just seeking justice, right? Seeking the truth. Absolutely. Truth's going to take you wherever it takes you to make decisions based on what you learn. Turning back to you, Mr. Shapley, what was your agency's leadership's response when you tried to alert officials outside your chain of command? So most recently when, uh, when Special Agent Ziegler uh, in, uh, emailed the commissioner, they basically uh, uh, threatened and intimidated uh, uh, Special Agent Ziegler that he had violated some type of law. Threatened and intimidated? And forced him, you know, uh, uh, this chain of command um, requirement that is, does not meet the legal requirements. So, so you're, you're trying to seek justice, you're trying to seek the truth, and they're throwing an obstruction in front of you. They're obstructing you from doing it, aren't they? So... My complaints of, uh, for IRS criminal investigation and senior leadership is not necessarily for, for blocking this investigation. Um, you know, I, I do believe that, that we raise things on a on continual basis and, and they just stuck their head in the sand and took no action. Um, but um, in terms of the retaliation, that's when they first reared their head. And you know, we, it was, there's no, no doubt about it that after protective disclosures were made that, that they took Primitive personnel practices against me. Mr. Shapley, Mr. Ziegler, have you ever been threatened before in an investigation? I have not, and I've come to learn that, that this uh, 6E grand jury threat may have happened before to other people inside the IRS. Mr. Shapley? 
No, not, not from, from my own agency, not from yeah, the so team. Yeah, when, so when my friends on the other side of the aisle say that Treasury hasn't retaliated against you, it's simply not true. There's a law, 5 U.S.C. 2303-B13, and they placed unlawfully you and your fellow supervisors under a gag order. Mr. Shapley and Mr. Ziegler, my time has expired, but what we're talking about here is obstruction of justice. Obstruction, you were seeking justice and you were obstructed. It's against the law. Mr. Chairman, I yield the balance. Gentleman yields back. Chair, recognize Mr. Moskowitz from Florida. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 